How's it going Star Seekers? My name's Got Cake and welcome to the channel. Now if you're a roguelite or a roguelike lover like me, try saying that fast 10 times, and have been looking for a new game to sink your teeth into, then Fury Unleashed might be just the thing to scratch that itch. It's a roguelite action platformer, which sees you blasting your way through several comic book stories featuring randomly generated level designs. You assume the role of protagonist Fury as he, or she, is guided onward by a mysterious figure known only as Mr Doodle. As always, hit that like button if you enjoy the review, and subscribe to the channel to see more Switch Indie game reviews. So hitting the main menu we see Fury looking like a ripe beast, with his chin beard and mohawk, and a big grin on his face as he happily blasts away at a skeleton. Checking out the options to begin with, there are some standard settings such as language and audio, as well as a few toggles which affect visuals and gameplay, and there's also a bloodless mode for all you squeamish or sensitive types, which removes the game's blood effects. So the game features twin stick controls, with a left analog stick moving fury and your right aiming your weapon. In the controls menu you can toggle auto fire on or off, and with it on you'll automatically begin firing wherever you aim, but with it off you'll need to aim and press ZR to fire. Due to the fast nature of the gameplay I'd suggest leaving it on. The game also features aim assist, the higher the setting the more your aim will lock onto enemies, so turning it off increases the game's difficulty. Now back at the main menu, there's the leaderboards and achievements which are pretty self explanatory and then we have two game modes to choose from, play solo or play co-op. Now anyone who's been watching the channel for a while will know that I don't have any friends so I'll be covering the single player mode in this review. After selecting solo you then get to choose between hard and easy difficulties. Now this is mainly just to give you a bit of an idea of which difficulty might be best for you as it can be changed at any time. Now of course I chose hard because I'm such a gaming pro, and in the next screen we get a look at the comic books which act as this game's scenarios or level themes. To begin with we only have the first comic book unlocked, titled Awakening of the Ancient Gods, but through playing you can unlock the other two, Operation Crimson Dusk and Earth's Last Stand. Before we dive into a game though, we can first take a look at the upgrade hero menu, which contains all sorts of tasty bits. First we have the skill tree, where you can assign skill points to various hero skills and abilities. Next we can customise the look of our hero, and at the moment we only have male or female appearances, but can unlock more as we play the game. I went for some sweet ass cornrows and a hot little soul patch, both of which I dyed blue. I then went all Kratos with a grey skin tone and some crimson war paint beneath the eyes. The loadout tab lets us pick between some basic starter weapons, though we can only select the SMG and katana at the moment. Moving on to the stats we have a bit of a who's who for enemies and bosses, which is empty for now, but we'll eventually fill up with all the enemies that we've faced. And our hero stat page of course gives us details about our hero's stats, as well as a running total of how much time we've spent enjoying in the game. The story tab lets us revisit any of the story elements that we've experienced, and finally the items tab, while pretty empty at the moment, will eventually fill up with all the different weapons, armour, grenades, trinkets and special abilities that we unlock in the game. So beginning our first game we're given a bit of an intro and have our first encounter with Mr Doodle. As you can see he looks like a bit of a freak, but he assures us that he's here to help us and kindly takes us through the tutorial level. Here we learn the basics like movement, and lots of jumping and double jumping, jumping down platforms and jumping back up platforms. We learn about the sprint button which you'll be using a lot to move between areas quickly and dodge lots of different traps, and using sprint while jumping performs an air dash move, which is also very useful. Finally we get to the good part, killing things, so we can shoot at enemies by aiming with the right analogue stick, we can toss grenades with the L button, and we can even go all Super Mario on enemies and stomp on their heads, mashing them into the ground. Whenever we kill enemies they drop black ink, which is basically XP, and gold ink, which is the currency that you can spend during a run. Once you die, this XP increases your level which provides you with skill points to be used in the skill tree. And as with skill trees in other games, to unlock some of the skills you often need to unlock previous skills linked to them. The more you improve a skill, the more skill points are required to improve it further, but the great thing in Fury Unleashed is that you can refund any skill points you've spent, which allows you to play around to find a skill build that best suits your playstyle. Some of the skills however are locked behind level caps, requiring you to reach level 15 and 35 in order to spend skill points on them. Now as you play you can be careful and work your way through levels slowly, but the game rewards you if you adopt a fast paced skillful playstyle. Every enemy you kill adds to your combo counter seen in the top left corner, which results in more ink dropping and healing orbs appearing, which restore some of your health when picked up. If your combo meter timer runs down or you get hit, your combo will end, but you can use skill points to improve your combo skills in different ways such as increasing the timer duration or providing combo shields. 
As we complete the tutorial, we get into the first of three chapters in this comic book. Whilst the game loads, the level layout is displayed, which is randomly generated for every chapter. When we gain control of Yuri, we can then take a look at the map by hitting the minus button. The areas on the map are uncovered as we work our way through the level, and it displays things such as room exits, and different icons for various items or characters that we encounter. You can also fast travel to doorways within any room that you've cleared, and you initially get 3 fast travel charges per chapter, but can increase this number through skill upgrades or items. Now the general gameplay loop in Fury is pretty much the same as any other roguelike. We work our way through the level, killing enemies, whilst earning currency and collecting weapons and items to improve our character. In order to complete a chapter, we need to make our way to the stage exit, which is indicated by the star icon on the map in the first level, but is hidden in subsequent chapters. Now Fury Unleashed has been in development for 5 years, and it certainly shows in the fluidity of the controls, polished graphics, quality of gameplay, and the amount of different encounters and items that you can find in a run. Now I don't want to spoil all the surprises the game has to offer, and I've probably not even experienced them all for myself, but I'll cover off a few of them to give you an idea of what type of things to expect. So as you work your way through a chapter and visit the different rooms, you'll find these icons with question marks on them, which when touched will reveal the contents. Focusing first on the pickup oriented icons, you can find different types of chests which contain a piece of equipment of a random rarity and type. Looking at the in-game character menu accessible from the pause menu, there are 5 different equipment slots for body armour, helmets, gloves, boots and of course some sweet shoulder pads. And we can carry 2 weapons which are switched between by pressing the right analogue stick in, 1 grenade type, a melee weapon and 1 super. Clothing that we acquire can provide armour which sometimes reduces incoming damage. Each time this happens though we lose an armour point off the equipment, but these can be repaired by finding Gundar the Undead Armourer. Armours can also provide various buffs such as reducing damage taken, increasing ink collection range or unique abilities such as this helmet which allows us to detect hidden enemies. When it comes to weapons, there are many different types of ranged melee and grenades. Now as far as I've seen, weapons in Fury Unleashed are similar to those in games like Borderlands, whereby you have base weapons and then the stats such as damage per second, reload time and clip sizes are rolled at random. Weapons can also come with additional attributes, such as shots that poison or freeze enemies, or rounds that ricochet off walls or pierce enemies, which just like in Borderlands, can lead to some ludicrously overpowered weapons. Grenades also come in different versions variations, such as cluster grenades or ones that drain enemy life. When it comes to superpowers, you've got a few different options. Your starter one lets out blasts which freezes enemies, but you can find other ones that provide things like bullet time or drones which fire on enemies. In addition to the equipable items, you can also collect trinkets which provide different benefits, such as re-rolling items in a chest, health boosts or additional fast travel charges. Now in addition to chests, the question mark boxes can also reveal NPCs, who provide many different services which often require you to spend the gold ink that you've collected. The Gun Lord has a shop which sells various weapons, and he also sets your challenges to unlock the other ranged and melee weapons for your starter loadout. The Blade Master is the melee version of this NPC, and he provides you with additional quests within chapters, which will reward you with an item for killing specific enemies with melee weapons. The Ink Master NPC provides a shop selling all types of equipables, and he's also the guy who will unlock new base weapon types for you. In order to unlock these though, you need to bring him a blueprint, which can be obtained from the Mistress of Fate, who will appear after you defeat a wave of invading chaos enemies within a room like this. You'll then get to select what type of weapon blueprint you want, and once you return it to the Ink Master, he'll provide you with a weapon at the beginning of your next run, and the weapon will then appear in future runs. There are also blessings which you can receive from the Order of the Eternal Ink. For these you've got to donate a specific amount of gold ink, and there are free donation tiers, each providing more powerful blessings. These blessings stack and provide benefits such as increased bullet damage or critical chance, but there's also a small chance that you won't receive a blessing after donating. So all these different elements and others that I haven't mentioned appear at random as you work your way through the chapters. There are many different types of enemies to encounter in the game, and these change with the theme of the comic book. In the first book, you'll encounter enemies featuring shamanic or sacrificial inspired appearances. Book 2 is set in a military complex and features the good old Nazis. And Book 3 takes place on board an alien ship and features, you guessed it, aliens. Each book features 3 chapters, and in every chapter after the first of Book 1, you'll get to face a chapter sub boss. And there's some great variation to these bosses, with some being more challenging than others. When defeated, bosses will drop a ton of ink, health orbs, and a chest. And if you manage to defeat a boss without taking a hit, you'll earn a flawless victory and get to pick between 2 items within the reward chest. 
upon reaching the end of some chapters, you'll encounter Mr. Doodle, and you'll be provided with more storyline relating to the artist of the comics whose pages you traverse. At the end of the third chapter, you'll face an end boss of the comic, and these fights are often much tougher, but once you defeat the boss, you'll get to progress onto the next comic. Each comic has three different bosses, and defeating all three of them will allow you to begin a run straight from the next comic. So hopefully I've given you enough of an insight into the game for you to decide whether it's something you fancy playing. So now we'll talk a little bit about my gameplay experience with Fury Unleashed. Now I'm a lover of roguelikes, with games like The Binding of Isaac, Enter the Gungeon and Dead Cells being some of my favourites. And with Fury Unleashed I've found another game to add to that list. I love the visuals of the game and I thought the comic book art style was fantastic. Each enemy in the game featured a great amount of detail, especially the bosses, and it's clear a lot of work has been put into making things look the best that they can. Another thing I thought was great was the weapon design and variation. I've always loved the loot seeking aspects of the Borderlands series, and you get a bit of that feeling in Fury Unleashed. When it comes to difficulty, I'm not going to lie, the game is pretty tough. But the great thing about Fury Unleashed is that you can make the game as easy or as hard as you like. When you switch to easy mode, you also get some additional easy mode settings within the game's in-game options menu. And these allow you to further tailor the game to your liking, allowing you to adjust the game speed, damage received, healing received, and enemy health. And this is fantastic for people who have always wanted to get into roguelikes, but have always found them too tough. One final thing I thought was great was the amount of different encounters within the game. So I give games a rating between 1 and 5 stars, and for the worst of games there's also the shovel worst stamp of approval. This rating is based on my own personal opinion on what the game has to offer in terms of gameplay quality, and whether I think the game offers value for money to potential buyers. And for a rating, I'd give Fury Unleashed 4 out of 5 stars. It's a great example of how a roguelite should be done. Yeah, it may have taken elements from many different games over its 5 year development cycle, but the way in which the developers tweaked and implemented them into the game doesn't feel like they've just ripped them off. Now the game's due to release in full in a few days, on the 8th of May, and you can get the game on the UK Switch eShop for £17.99, or from the US Switch eShop for $19.99, and in my opinion it's well worth a buy, but if you're still not convinced, you can also play a demo of the game right now on the Switch eStore. The game's also coming out for Xbox and PlayStation 4, or alternatively you can get the game on Steam, where you can actually play it right now on Early Access. And that's it for this review of Fury Unleashed. If you enjoyed watching the review, don't forget to show your appreciation by hitting the like button. And while you're at it, consider subscribing to the channel. For now though, I just want to say thanks to you all for watching again. And until next time, game on.